Pull off a miracle. The shot! He scores! Miracle delivered! 3-2! Ooh, Giroux holding. Gets around in front. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Flyers Nation show. I'm your host, Travis Ballinghoff. Alexa Ross will be back with you next episode, but for this week, I'm filling in. All right, so the Flyers just wrapped up preseason. They finished with a 2-3-1 and record. Doesn't sound great. Didn't look a whole lot better, but I'm not going to overanalyze anything that I saw in the preseason. Preseason is more so you want to get your hands in sync with your feet, and you want to develop chemistry with your new line mates. That's the biggest key. And also, something that we're starting to see now with more and more preseason games is that the home team will dress their NHL squad for their fans, while the away team usually saves their NHL squad for their home games. And they're, you know, they may dress one defensive pair and two NHL forward lines, but after that it's mostly AHLers. But let's dive into these specific games. All right, so their first preseason game was against the Islanders. It was at home at the Wells Fargo Center, and it was great to see fans back again. As for the product on the ice, the Flyers did look rusty, and the Islanders had already played a preseason game, so they kind of got their legs going a little bit. It took the Flyers about a period to get going. Uh, Igor Zamula did have a nice night, but the Flyers did fall to the Islanders 3-2 in overtime. For the second game, it was kind of a bit what we talked about earlier. Uh, it was in Boston. The Bruins had their A team out there, and the Flyers, they had JVR and Frost and Faraby out there who looked really good together, but outside of that, they were clearly outmatched by the Bruins A team, and they fell in that game. The third game of the preseason, I thought was their best. It was at home against the Washington Capitals. They won 3-1, to one, which doesn't sound like, oh, they dominated, but they really did. They had a lot of zone time. They had a lot of quality chances. They played good. It was the Capitals' B team, so you expect the Flyers should dominate the, play, the pace of play. They did. It was good to see. Their next game, much of the same. It was against the Bruins at home again. Uh, it was a 2-1 victory by the Flyers. Again, they had really good zone time, very good quality chances. Bruins goalie Jeremy Swayman, he stood on his head. He deserves a lot of credit. The Flyers stuck with it, and they won that game. Their next game... It was against the Islanders in New York, and it was another game where they got clearly outmatched. Uh, our fourth line played Thompson, Lawton, and Albe Kubel. All right, so some observations I made throughout the preseason. The team stood up for each other. That was something we didn't see much of last year. Anytime there was a scrum after the whistle, anytime there was a big hit, the Flyers were right in their opposition's face. That was good to see, especially because it's preseason. You don't always see that, but the guys were engaged, and that was great to see. Uh, the power play, the penalty kill, both units looked inconsistent. Uh, the power play, they'd have one good shift all game, and then they'd have two or three clunkers that led to some opposite momentum. And as far as the penalty kill, they'd have a couple good kills, and then they'd give up a goal like 10 seconds into the play. Uh, so both units are going to still need some work. Carter Hart looked really, really good. He was reading plays, tracking pucks. When he's doing that, he's on his game. He's making the hard saves look easy. The captain, 33-year-old Claude Giroux, he still looks like G. Uh, he's probably not going to put up 80, 90 points like he did in his prime, but he's still a damn good hockey player. Rasmus Ristolainen, he's banging bodies. He's hitting everything that moves. His physicality is as advertised. Uh, Derek Broussard, I think, has played very well. Um, I was at training camp a couple of times, and I was like, wow, Brass looks really good. And that's kind of translated over into the preseason. I really liked his game. And the top unit, uh, Provorov and Ellis, they look great together. You can tell they have some chemistry. Their heads are up. They're walking the blue line. They're getting shots on net. They look very good. Uh, some things I'm nervous about, kind of just touched on it, the lack of center depth. Kevin Hayes is going to be out a little bit. Hopefully, Broussard can continue to play well, and hopefully Scotty Lawton can play his game, and they won't miss Kevin too, too much. And another thing that kind of worries me is Martin Jones. When he's been on the ice, there's been a lot of pucks go in the net. Not all his fault. Some bad reads by him. Some, some defensive breakdowns. Um, but either way, the puck's getting in the net too 
often when he's on the ice. And that needs to be cleaned up. Uh, some things I want to see. Um, if the power play continues to struggle, I really want to see Ristolainen net front on the second unit. It was something he did in Buffalo a couple years ago. It gives the team a different dynamic, a different look. Big body in front with Ristolainen's got some decent hands on him. He doesn't get enough credit for that. And also Morgan Frost. I talked about him a little bit earlier. It seems that the coaching staff wanted him up. But Chuck Fletcher wanted him to get reps with the Phantom, so they sent him down. Um, if the center depth does lack, I would really like to see him up here sooner rather than later. All right, so now I want to have a little fun in the comments. Uh, I want to do a little predicting. Um, I want to know who you guys think will be the team MVP this year. I want to know who you guys think will be the best defenseman on the ice. And I want to know who you think will be the most improved player. So for the team MVP, I'm going to go Shaw Couturier. As long as he's healthy, I think it's going to be a given. We know how good he is. Power play, penalty kill. He plays all three zones, both sides of the puck very well. We all know that. As long as Coots is healthy, I think he's the team MVP. Uh, for defenseman of the year, I'm going to go with Ryan Ellis. I really like his game. I don't think he gets enough credit for, one, how good defensively he is, but two, the snarl he brings. Flyers fans are going to be pleasantly surprised by that. And for most improved player, I'm going to go with Nick Albeke-Bell. We've seen it a little bit in the preseason. He's flying around, creating havoc on the forecheck, banging bodies. He needs to do that, and he needs to stay out of the penalty box. We did see a couple times in that Islanders game, he took some dumb minor penalties. He's got to keep that to a minimum. But as long as he's flying around, creating havoc on the forecheck, I think he can get back to the player he was two years ago. And for me, that's my most improved player. Uh, so leave a comment and tell me who you guys think. Before I go, I want to give a congratulations to both Rick Tockett and Paul Holmgren. Both of those guys will be inducted into the Flyers Hall of Fame in November. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we had JJ on give his analysis with Alexa on the voting process. So a big congratulations to those guys. Both are well-deserving. As for this episode, that's all I got for you. Uh, Alexa will be back next week. She'll be doing an interview with number 25, James Van Reems. Like, you don't want to miss that. As for this episode, I'm your host, Travis Ballinghoff. You can follow me on Twitter, at TraviBallin26, and on Instagram, at Travis underscore Ballinghoff. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.